que disfruten eh, la conferencia de hoy y que participen de los días que vienen. Sabemos que hay, hubo muchas postulaciones a los talleres de mañana y del jueves y ese es un esfuerzo súper importante en un área en donde no se hace mucho todavía. Le damos la bienvenida a Mark Napier. Él es un artista norteamericano que fue formado como pintor y es pionero y en, en, en el arte eh, en Internet. Napier es bachiller en Bellas Artes de la Universidad de Syracuse y es docente en el departamento de la Escuela de Arte Teach de la Universidad de Nueva York en el programa de telecomunicaciones interactivas ITP. Gracias. So, I'm Mark Napier, um, known as a, uh, in the past as a net artist. This, this piece actually was, in, was a, a net art piece. While it's up here, I'll just give you uh, a little background on it. It reads uh, Google Images for the word USA. So it, it uh, is searching for the word USA in Google Images and then taking back all the images it finds and treating the pixels of those images almost like instructions. I want to talk a little bit about where this stuff comes from, this word new media, and why, why I like it so much. I teach at NYU in, um, in New York. And recently, I've been teaching a class in, in uh, graphics for artists and realized something which is that this, this word new media really applies to a lot of art over, over centuries. This is Michelangelo, Sistine Chapel. Uh, I like to think of Michelangelo as like Pixar and Leonardo da Vinci was DreamWorks. These guys could create illusions of 3D spaces that no one else at the time could do as well. Caravaggio, um, I love this painting and I show this all the time when I'm uh, talking to my students. I use this as an example often. This is a, a later painting into the Baroque period. The, you're looking at a scene of uh, Doubting Thomas and Christ is taking his hand and putting his hand into the wound as if to say, yes, this is real. So in all those cases, are you seeing that art, art it creates a relationship with the viewer and that is related to what's happening at that time in technology and in media. When you're working with a computer now, you have the element of time, for instance, which we did not really have before. Artwork in the past, an artist makes it, he puts it down and it stays still for forever, as long as they can keep it in the museum, as long as they can keep it from being damaged. So Potato Land, this is potatoland.org. Before I forget, um, let me say that if you want to see any of this stuff, al almost all of my work is here in some form. Let me go back here to Shredder. Um, so the idea of the Shredder, this is, this is again right at the very beginning of the web. Web was still a very new thing. And I sat down for a couple weekends and, and figured, you know, I can, I can write a kind of quote unquote web browser that will completely turn the rules of the web on its head. Really, what I found really fun about this was that just by changing the rules, by writing some scripts that interpret the information coming across the internet, I could actually change the entire internet change the way it's perceived. And that's, that's what, the, what, the, uh, what the technology is showing us now, what, what it makes, this moment makes available to us. With, with this piece called Feed, I was thinking about information. Since, I, since for money I would work in the finance industry and there's this concept of feeds of data that provide all sorts of useful information. And I wanted to create a feed that provided just aesthetic information to do. From my perspective, I'm interested in mysticism and I'm interested in this idea of what, what is the world before words? Before you have language, what is the experience of being alive? And can you have that kind of experience again? Can you have an experience outside of language where you're, you're perceiving the world without actually interpreting that world through a verbal structure? So th this piece was actually, uh, it was shown as, a, uh, as a, a generative artwork like this and also printed on a much larger scale. Now powerful structures in our society are based largely around software. They're not based around steel so much and even the way we wage wars is very different. The materials we use for waging wars and the weapons we use are very different. Where information can be just as powerful if you can convince an enemy not to fight or confuse them through some through information tactics these these things are being explored as much as as uh, weapons are traditional weapons 
So the idea I'm after here is that this, this structure that we're familiar with and so used to seeing is actually now being changed by our by the new technologies that we've created. And but most people look at it and say, oh my God, Empire State Building collapsing, you know, too painful. Certainly in New York, and I can understand that. I'm not I'm not entirely surprised by it. But I think that the piece is it's misinterpreted to see it in that sort of micro scale, or just that moment in time. And actually, I think that wouldn't be such a bad idea to kind of get to educate the viewer, because and and not that the viewer is stupid. I'm not suggesting that. What I'm saying is they they just don't know. In their home, they know that there's an internet connected to an artwork because it's their computer. So these kinds of things ended up being um, a big challenge in terms of how a show is presented. And I'm still really working on that to figure out what is the best way to do this. And on that note, just to show some of the images, this is from a show at Bitforms. Um, this one on the left side was smoke shown, you know, presented in effect as a video installation. And the prints that I had just described are on the, the side walls. Me intriga, lo mencionaste, pero no hablaste muy en profundidad del tema de, de cómo se, qué pasa con la compra de obra de este tipo. Eh, en Chile el coleccionismo es escasísimo y el, el, el coleccionismo de arte contemporáneo difícil. Me pregunto qué pasa en el primer mundo con el coleccionismo de este tipo de arte. Um, yeah, the, these pieces, the market for them is very small. And more and more artists that have worked, say, on the internet, uh, they were largely funded by academic environments or not funded at all. Now people are moving out of that environment to a large extent, the people that I've known that were in it for a long time. And they're working in um, performance art or uh, making installations, um, some going the route of prints, making prints. and many going more towards a video kind of uh, environment, which in some ways I am. You know, I'm making my work, even though it's still generative using a computer, um, I'm starting to show it more as if it's a video and framing it that way. So I think a part of that's just survival. People finding, the artists finding ways to connect with some sort of income from this artwork. I've, I have sold pieces, but more recently, I think, now what's going on in the U.S. with the economy, it, it, there's, there's kind of a, a cooling off. Probably need about 20 more years for people to just get used to the idea that this medium is around, it's not going away. For it to become as normal as the telephone or electricity, then it isn't so odd to have an artwork that you plug in. But right now, I'd say it's, it's still seen as largely odd to plug in an artwork. I, um, I think that all of that comes together to be the art. Um, the artwork itself may be an object on a wall somewhere, or it might be a series of objects that are being spread around the world in performance events. And what you sell, what part of that you sell, is not necessarily the art. Like, the art is this larger process. Probably. I would be shocked if in my lifetime I saw websites selling for a lot of money. But I would not be at all shocked if I saw a lot more artists using the web to create this large sort of global performance aspect to the art and then selling some, some piece of that. Maybe only you know, one tenth of everything they produce, but some small part of that larger body of work ends up being the thing they sell to fund the whole process. Okay, great. Thanks for coming.